Hey everyone, this is Bobby, and today we're going to continue with our Day 3 Confession Scriptures, and today's topic is health and healing. In case you're wondering, so today we're wearing a Bradyon t-shirt, Get Red Pilled, and there's a place that you can find a lot of truth. You can find a lot of error too, but at least there's no censorship there, so go check it out sometime. It's freezing in my office, so I have to have this sweater on. All right, so today's Confession Scripture is Romans 8, 11. So let's read that, and then I want to read a couple of other passages to go along with it just to talk about, you know, why Romans 8, 11 is true. Um, and so we'll look at Acts 10, 38, we'll look at Acts chapter 1, and then we'll look at the definition of the word power. All right, so Romans 8, 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Okay, so let's just um, talk through it. But if the spirit of him, okay, so first of all, it's talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of our Father. But if the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of our Father, which raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in us, so if the spirit of our Father, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, then our Father who raised Jesus from the dead by his Holy Spirit shall also quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in us. Okay. So what he's saying is, you know, we're born again, sons of God, and we have received the Holy Spirit. So we are, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. You know, if we're born again, and then we have the Holy Spirit upon us, you know, as if wearing, you know, clothing, like endued, anointed with the Holy Spirit. If you are baptized with the spirit, Okay, and so the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, has all the power of God. Okay, and so wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is the power of God. And if you have that dead-raising, life-giving, healing of the sick, casting of devils, Spirit of God inside of you, then you have everything you need to walk in health. I mean, your body shall be quickened, alive, well, energetic, comfortable, vibrant, you know, just vital, invigorated, is full of life. Your mortal body shall be quickened because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. Amen? And so that's amazing. So we just have to, we have to recognize what is inside of us, who is inside of us, and we have to have faith, you know, because all the power of God is released by faith. Somebody has to be in faith in order for power to be released. Okay, so that's generally the way things happen. So we have to know something, we have to believe something, and then we have to align our, our words, our actions with that, which is a demonstration of faith. Okay? So basically, it's as simple as this. Um, we are born again. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of our mortal bodies. The same Spirit that enabled Jesus to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, and to bring forth supernatural provision, and to set... Uh, people free from oppression, and to read the hearts and minds of people. That same Holy Spirit, which Jesus had, dwells in us. And so if that healing, dead-raising Spirit lives inside of us, then we should be walking in perfect health. Amen? Because the power of God to heal and make alive is resident within us. And so we want to believe in that. We want to confess that. We want to experience that. Amen? Okay. And just to you know, just to solidify things, I wanted to look at Acts 10, 38 and Acts um, 1, 5 and 8. So Acts 10, 38 tells us how Jesus was equipped to pre perform miracles. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay, so in this passage, God is Father. So Father anointed Jesus, the Son, with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there are some people, for whatever reason, they doubt that there's a trinity. Here's one of the scriptures that makes it absolutely, um, extremely visible that you can see right here. Father anointed Jesus, the Son, with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's three people. Um, it's a Godhead. You can call it Trinity. You can call it the Godhead. You can call it Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But there are three persons of God. Amen? Okay, so anyway, the point is we have three people in agreement, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And along with the Holy Spirit, as we said, comes the dunamis, miraculous power of God. So that word power right there 
It's a Greek word, um, G1411, if you want to look it up. Um, this is the word dunamis. And I have a partial definition here. It's miraculous power. It's moral power. It's um, excellence of soul. It's power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, or hosts. Okay, so this is a, the tremendous, miraculous power of God himself. And whenever you see the Holy Spirit being talked about and the word power is mentioned with them, that is the miraculous power of God, the dead raising, devil casting, healing of the sick, needs fulfilling, freedom bringing, reading of the hearts and minds and soul, power of God. Amen? Okay, so because Jesus had the Holy Spirit, he therefore had the miraculous power of God and therefore he was able to do all the healing that he did, plus all the other works. Okay, well, we receive that exact same spirit and that exact same power. In Acts 1, 5 to 8, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so here... Um, and you can also see that there's multiple baptisms. You know, John was baptizing with water, and that's for remission of sins. But then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's to equip us with the miraculous power of God to enable a miraculous ministry work. Like Jesus, he began his miraculous ministry after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit when he was 30 years old. Amen? Okay, so the same should be for us as well. That same spirit, the same power, the same baptism, the same anointing. And he says, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And the words anointed, baptized, clothed, endued, all those words are the same. It means the same thing. It's when the Spirit is upon you. Like you're wearing the Holy Spirit like clothing, like a big, huge, you know, outer skin or something, but with all the power and strength of God. Amen? Okay, so that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And along with him... Um, Jesus said, and this is it's not in red print, but it's Jesus speaking. Jesus said, you shall receive power. That's the same word, dunamis, miraculous power of God. Okay, you shall receive dunamis, miraculous power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen? Okay, and so then he says, we will be witnesses to him. And because we have the Holy Spirit, because we have the power of God, we're not just witnesses of word, but we are witnesses with power to heal, to cast demons, to help people in supernatural ways that a mere man cannot. So just as Jesus was healing and doing good and raising the dead, you know, we have the same spirit, the same power, and we are commissioned to do the same things. Okay, so the point of all this is to say that when we have the Holy Spirit, then that healing power of God is resident uh, inside of us and upon us if we're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so if you have the healing power of God with you, then we should just walk in health. It should just be normal to stay healthy because that healing, dead raising, devil casting spirit is inside of us and upon us. Therefore, we should just walk in health all the days of our life. And that's actually the will of God. And so let us awaken to that. Let us fight for that. Let us let us resist the devil if he tries to bring something against us. But let us just walk this way. Amen? All right, now let's go ahead and make a confession out of this. So we've already read the scripture out loud. Now I want to speak it forth in first person, and I want to bring in words and different scenarios in here to make it really just come alive and have more meaning for me. And you can, you know, you can put whatever scenarios in there that you want for yourself. Okay. So for example, what do I mean by that? Well, maybe somebody has been struggling with with pain, or maybe somebody else has been struggling with bouts of sickness or with mental illness or or whatever, maybe weakness, you know, different people could have some, you know, different experiences or different things that they want to make this come alive in. So if you have some area that needs some healing, that needs some health, then put it into your confession. Amen. All right. So I declare in the name of Jesus, I declare that I have received the Holy Spirit. I am a son of God. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am anointed with the Holy Spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus, I am filled with the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. The same Spirit 
that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Therefore, by the power of the Holy Spirit, my mortal body is quickened. My mortal body is healed and whole by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. My mortal body is filled with energy and strength and comfort and prosper self because my mortal body is quickened by the Holy Spirit, the dead raising spirit of God, the healing of the sick spirit of God, the devil casting spirit of God lives inside of me and is upon me. And just as he heals the sick around me, the Holy Spirit keeps alive and well and energetic my mortal body. I declare in the name of Jesus, my mortal body is filled with energy, is filled with life by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of me. I declare in the name of Jesus that I am unsickable, I am uninjurable, I am undamageable, I am unweakenable, I am uninfirmitable. No spirit of infirmity can come upon me. Why? Because my mortal body is quickened by the Holy Spirit who dwells in me. Therefore, I abide in health by the power of the Holy Spirit. I prosper in health by the power of the Holy Spirit. I will live a long life, a healthy life. I will never have sickness, pain, injury, weakness, or any kind of ailment or malady in my body nor in my soul, for I am quickened by the Holy Spirit who dwells in me. Amen. And so you could go on and on and on with this as long as you want. You can put in whatever scenarios or aspects of health that you want to have this quickening, um, put it in there. You know, maybe somebody lacks energy, maybe somebody has, is dealing with weakness, you know, so whatever your situation, put it in there and just kill that thing, kill that problem. You know, let the Holy Spirit quicken your body. Amen. Okay, now we want to say it back to God as a thank you. All right, so Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit. So first of all, thank you, Jesus, that through you, I am a son of God. I'm your brother. Thank you that you have made me into, like yourself, you have made me a son of God, a human being filled and anointed with the Holy Spirit, a new creation in Christ. Thank you, Father, for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for anointing me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me the same spirit and the same power that Jesus used to raise the dead and heal the sick. Thank you for giving me the same spirit and same power that you used to raise Jesus from the dead. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you live inside of me and that you live upon me. Thank you that you are always with me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that by your power and by your presence, my mortal body is healed and whole, energetic, quickened, alive and well, filled with life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that by your ever presence in me and with me and upon me, I will never be sick. I will never be injured. I will never be ailed or withered or maladied or any other thing. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that I shall live a long and healthy and prosperous life with perfect health and comfort in all of my flesh and in my soul. Thank you and amen. All right. Well, that's it for today. So God bless you. And we'll talk again soon.